Hey everybody, it's been a while since I posted a video um, about Windows Media Center and Windows 10. It was shortly after I upgraded to Windows 10. And you can probably see the video here. If, if uh, What I can do is I can post a video link in the description if you want to go, go back and watch the original. But this is basically right here. Um, this is back in October of 2015. See, basically, back then, a release, um, a unofficial one as me saying release was out. Basically, what these people had done is they had ported out the Windows Me Center from a Windows 10 preview build to where you could actually install it into the final build. Now, basically, this executable just gave you the basic Windows Me Center but it lacked many things required for it to work properly so I ran into several issues with it not being able to download guide updates not being able to activate for cable card use and it's all sorts of stuff but recently um, because I you know I posted a comment to a different video about my findings that hey this isn't going to work this is on a different video um, from Windows 10 update and I had got a reply from YouTube user FretWizard420 he said I wouldn't have any issues at all, so you know, I asked him what kind of workarounds did you get to work. And he posted these links in the comments of this video, which actually is a different build of the Windows Media Center. This is actually a port from I believe Windows 8 or 8.1. It shows it shows something different than what you actually would see. Um, for example, let me show you right quick. This is a screenshot from the original video. You know the original build I installed, and you can see it says Windows 10 version 10.0.10134.0 with Windows Media Center technologies. Now, if we have Windows Media Center, which I have the, the newer build installed, and we go into settings, oops, not TV, about Windows Media Center software version and you can see here it says Windows 8.1 version 6.3.9600.16384 so it's a it's from a different build of Windows it's from a Windows 8.1 build not only that this um, installer includes more things so today we are going to experiment this a little bit and see if we can get one of the media center working in Windows 10 on a Seton tuner I have a Seton Infinity TV 6. It's in a different computer. So, I, you know, I don't know if anybody has posted a video about trying to get this working with a Seton. Now, this user on YouTube, he has an HD Home Run Prime. Your Fit Wizard 420, he has a different setup. Okay, everybody, so here, here we have the TV Box Slim. This is a Windows Media Center box I built last year. For use in our other bedroom for my grandmother. This was her TV computer and what I'm doing is I am repurposing this machine. Well of course going back to the same room for the same purpose but <laughs> it's getting um, getting wiped and reloaded because it was getting pretty bogged down with stuff. So we're going to be using this machine here to do our testing. Here we have a relatively fresh installed Windows 10 Pro. I've already went through the um, process of setting Windows updates to notify to download and then disabling the notification so that way it doesn't bug you. This way it doesn't automatically install updates like it would normally do. This is critical on a machine that has to be up and running all the time. And this is the reason, the big reason why I have Windows 10 Pro on here. So anyways, here's the package. First we'll run test rights as an administrator and you see we have been greeted with a command prompt to end so that's a good sign now we'll right click and choose run as run as a min on the installer
now it's installing the DVD functionality which is something this is something the other package did not do there's definitely a difference between these two packages once this completes I'll show you how to get a seat in Infinity V6 running on this on Windows 10 I'll go ahead and start talking about it why well, this is okay we're finished now so anyways there we go Me Center is now installed I'll go ahead and start up Me Center for you to see it and of course in my case with Windows 10 we always install Classic Shell to get our useful start menu back it's in the accessories Windows Me Center And look what we have here, guys. There it is. Windows Media Center. There we go. Do express settings for now. If I go into settings, general, about Windows Media Center, software version, you can see it's the Windows 8.1 version. So, there you have it. Open up Media Center and run the Digital Cable Advisor. Let's lay on this kind of basic end processor to catch up with this here. Digital Cable Advisor. So for those who don't know, um, Digital Cable Advisor is, the, is like the equivalent of um, Windows Experience Index. It actually runs WinSat in the background to assess your hardware. So we have the Digital Cable Advisor, choose next, agree, next, start test, and we'll let this tool run and see what we get. And it passed, whereas in 64-bit it would fail for the video driver. There's some AMD needs to work on. Okay, let's go and talk about getting the Seaton Infinity V to work with this. Now, in my previous video, we were dealing with the original Windows 10 Threshold release, the original RTM release. Now we're dealing with Threshold 2, which has had some things changed with it. So let's go ahead and download the Seaton Windows 7 drivers. The reason why we do the Windows 7 drivers is because Seaton says, oh, Windows 8 does not support uh, network tuners, which is not necessarily the case. It actually does um, when it's not the host machine, from my understandings. A while back, I tried to, you know, upgrade the Black Max in Windows 10. And while, you know, the Seaton tuner did have a driver and everything, um, the reason why I had to revert back to Windows 7 was due to flaky... Uh, network bridging. So anyways, go to Seton's website here and we'll go ahead and download this driver package. So if on our, on our home page you go to support and then installation and downloads we'll choose the Windows 7 driver package which I've already done it just to give you an example how to save as now when you go to run this you're going to get an error message because 
Seton, you know, wrote this back in the before Windows 10 came out. <laughs> now, of course, you know, normally Windows 10 has no media center, so let's go ahead and go to downloads. Which, of course, you guys can see I run Classic Shell. That's a given. You can see all oh, has to be, you, you can only be installed on Windows 7 Service Pack 1, blah, blah, blah. Let's go into properties and set compatibility for Windows 7 and see what happens. You can see it runs. This was one thing that apparently has been fixed in, in Windows 10, 15, 11 is better compatibility mode. So we'll choose next and we'll install the Network Tuner Wizard that has to be installed. And now it says blah blah blah. Okay, let's see what's going on here. I think this is the problem I ran into last time. It says it can only be installed on one on one oh seven service pack one home premium professional enterprise or ultimate. Blah blah blah. And you can see it does nothing. The same programs and features. Yep, not there. Actually, I think what happens is it extracts to a folder. So let's try this again. Yep, it extracts to a folder. So open up Task Manager. More details. See if I can figure out where this. Um, here we go, Seth Wizard. We'll go open file location. It takes you to this here. How about seat and setup architecture bootstrapper? Okay, here is what we're looking for, I think. So we're going to properties, compatibility, choose 107. Okay. Let's see if this wipes by itself or not. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, it wipes. So what we have to do here is we have to run the install you know start the installer after we set it to set this to compatibility. Go into task manager. Seaton setup architecture bootstrapper. Up in file location. Go up one folder and we'll just copy this folder and paste it to the desktop. That way we have. Now we can go ahead and cancel this out. And it should not clear it out. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to set this compatibility mode to Windows 7. And let's see if it gives an error this time. Okay, now let's go ahead to the um, this one. Properties. Compatibility. Not previous versions of Windows. Oh wow, that's great. Well, it looks like we're going to go as far as to edit the MSI. So, <laughs> I have downloaded Microsoft Orca MSI Editor. And see what we have here. What I'll do is I'll include a full, um, I'll include a link in the description for this file. If I don't, remind me to do so. So now, you know, we went we went through the process um, in this ixp 0010 we have these two MSI files. That's why I can't simply you know, run, you know, run compatibility. So on this one here, we're going to edit it with Orca. So you see here we have all this stuff here. 
Okay, I think I may have found what our problem is. It's this line here. It's the ERR wrong Windows version. It's a not version NT601 and not Service Pack 1. I do believe. Level 1. Let's. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just make a backup copy of this file. You'll be. You know, be I believe it'll be about a similar process for the 64 bit one as well. So. So the copy. And we'll paste the copy as a backup. Let's go ahead and drop this row. Save and close. Now let's go ahead and try this again. Include the network tuners wizard. And it works. Okay, we figured out how to bypass that. Yeah, it's a lot of work to do. <laughs> Not too bad if you take your time at it. You know, just be thankful I figured this out for you. So now we should have the Seton drivers on here finally. We'll let this finish up. Uncheck Launch Seaton Diagnostics, click Finish, and let's reboot the machine. Oh wow, that took me a while to figure this out. Lots of searching to do. At least for you guys, it'll be much easier. I'll be sure to give you the, um, the download for Orca. Now that we have our Seaton software installed, the correct Seaton software, we should be able to move forward with this. It's amazing all this work I've done, and I don't even know if it's going to work or not in the, in the long run. <laughs> yeah. The things I do for you guys. Okay, now <clears throat> let's launch Media Center and see if we can get our tuner to work. It started Task Manager by itself. Oh, look what it's doing. It's, it's relaunching. What is this one? Is 98? Crap. Last time, I, last time I seen an operating system that relaunched, things you had up previously was like Windows 9X. All right, let's go ahead and start Media Center. I tell you guys, looking up how to get that MSI to work about gave me a headache. Now up in the extras, let's see. Is it there? Yes, it is. The Infinity TV Network Tuners Wizard. And this dispels the myth um, that. Seaton Infinity TV Network Tuning does not work on Windows 8. This is the Windows 8 Media Center, just so you know. You see it's picking up our tuner. Windows Firewall. And you can see we have tuner 1 selected. I'm going to choose next. <laughs> oh, wow. What do we have here? It's like it ran some sort of, we got some sort of error message. I never got an error message like that before. We'll let this complete and see if it makes any changes though.
just FYI, on the previous 64-bit install, I was able to, um, I was in fact able to get a TV signal from a local channel. We had guide updates. Um, you know, all the good stuff. Just going to choose OK to go to uh, Media Center Tuner Setup. Now, you would actually need to run one of Media Center's administrator, I believe, to get TV set up to work properly. Now, let's see if it picks up our tuner this time. Despite that little error we had. All right, let's see. Set up TV signal. I see digital tuner diagnostics isn't there, but. Okay, let's see what happens here. Usually, what it would do is it would just freeze and say when does media center stop working. Agree to play ready terms. This is one of the problems I had on the 64 bit install was play ready. Can't stand play ready sometimes. Let's see if I can download setup data. It looks like it's doing it. So we're doing we're better off this time than we was previously. Now, we're not actually using all six tuners, so we need to do manually. We choose cable. No, we do not have enough box. Cable card. We're only using tuner number one on this setup. Not sure why it doesn't work properly here, but next. Now, let's see if digital cable activates. This was problem number two I had in my prior video. It would have aired out by now. So it looks like we're doing better. Fingers crossed, guys. If digital cable activates, then the only last thing we have to be concerned about is play ready. Digital cable has been successfully activated. So we'll skip through these steps because the cable card is already paired with the tuner. We'll choose Time Warner Cable HD Charlotte Digital for my area. No, we do not want to set up another TV signal. Select next to confirm. This is the problem I ran into last time. Play ready. Stupid play ready. It just fails. Every single time. Fails. Now if I go into um you know, if I look in the properties of you know well actually let's go into program data. Normally what play ready is supposed to do is write a file to this folder, Microsoft, you see Play Ready. And there's nothing there. It's supposed to write a file called MSPR.hcs. So it seems like the only thing that's preventing us from doing anything is flipping Play Ready. Let me show you something here, guys. So we're going to let the, the TV program guide download. So 
So at this point, we have access to local channels. So I pull up the guide. Channel 2 is a local channel. <clears throat> And you can see we have television. We have TV. I'll go in full screen this. Oh, this is the only problem I have. Is play ready. Stupid play ready. So I can watch local channels. Local channels. We have access to locals. But anything like up here, you'll get a copy and prohibited message. Yep, copy and prohibited. When you're trying to play back live TV. So stupid play ready is the only problem that we have as of right now. Everything else works except for any channel that is protected. Because play ready will not install properly. So that's where we stand at this moment.